Hello and welcome to Turf Truth Tuesday where we look at claims in the turf grass industry and ask, are they true? If you're new to the channel you may like to subscribe to be notified of new content. While preparing our last video on base saturation, we came across one of the most bizarre claims we have ever heard. The claim is so far out there, we are not even sure how to describe it. Hmm. George, can you help us out? When it comes to bullshit, truly major league bullshit, you have to stand back in awe in awe of the all-time heavyweight champion. Thanks, George. As far as we are concerned, this clip is the all-time heavyweight champion of BS. Let's take a look at the clip first before we explain it. To be fair, we are going to play the one-minute clip without comment to allow Joel to provide his context. And in this particular case, the pH is actually being driven by the combination of magnesium, which is quite excessive, and potassium, which is also excessive, both cations. The way for us to push these off the colloid is to put into this soil what is deficient. And in this case, what is deficient is calcium. As you can see by the deficiencies here, both samples, left and right, have calcium deficiencies. So in this case, the recommendation is using high calcium lime, even though the pH is high, because what we want to accomplish is using that lime to knock off that excessive magnesium, which will actually start to allow hydrogen to come onto that soil colloid and bring the pH down. That's right. Joel claims that applying lime to a high pH soil will lower pH. Joel claims lime. Calcium carbonate. Will lower pH. We want to be very clear, it is chemically impossible for calcium carbonate to result in a soil pH reduction. It does not matter how many pints you've had, how many gummies you've eaten, or how brainwashed you've become from reading misinformation on calcium, in the reality that the rest of us live in, calcium carbonate will not lower soil pH. Even Joel's own agronomist has told him that calcium carbonate will increase pH. Back in the day, we used to use a lot of high calcium lime to try to to uh, rebalance some of these high magnesium soils and then use a lot of ammonium sul sulfate uh, to try to counter the high pH move from, the, from the, the lime. So he just told Joel that when they applied lime, the pH would increase. Don't, 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 don't. Unfortunately, Joel's claim is not the only claim. Almost literally exploding with bullshit. Thanks, George. Joel should feel bad, but he should not feel lonely. Joel's claims are not the only claims polluting our industry. Roll the tape. I would just use the whole bag. Okay. You can't, like I said, you can't use too much. Getting the calcium is really important. I make my liming recommendations off of this base saturation right here. You know, gypsum, which is actually going to contain sulfur. Uh, usually that's done in more alkaline soils to bring pH down and give it some calcium. This sort of bullshit can be very dangerous because if it is told enough times, it may eventually convince you it is true. So, today we are going to discuss soil pH, should you be concerned, and if so, how do you go about changing it? And we hope by the end, you will be equipped to spot this bullshit when you see it. Links to all the content used in this video are in the description below. Let's get started. Soil pH influences essentially every important function in the soil turfgrass system. Biological activity, nutrient solubility, and mineral weathering just to name a few. It is more or less the equivalent of taking someone's temperature and it provides initial information about the anticipated direction of many soil processes. So, if you ever hear someone say this. Why we as a company have ignored the soil test and particularly the pH test. You might want to get a second opinion. Should you be concerned about your soil pH? If your soil pH is between 6 and 7, probably not. From 6 to 7, the likelihood of turf grass benefiting from a pH adjustment is very low. However, as soil pH reduces below 6 or increases above 7, the turf grass is at greater and greater risk of stress due to soil pH related issues. However, simply because your soil pH is below 6 or above 7 does not mean you should immediately amend the soil. Many turf grass managers maintain acceptable turf grass on soils outside the 6 to 7 range. It is when soil pH is below 6 or above 7, and turf grass quality is unacceptable, that you should consider amending the soil. In extreme cases when the soil pH increases above 8 or reduces below 5, then adjusting soil pH will almost certainly be beneficial. The key here is to not chase numbers, but instead use the numbers along with turfgrass response to guide your management decisions. Turfgrass tolerance to soil pH varies among species. However, in general, turfgrass is quite resilient and tolerant to a wide soil pH range. Be mindful, this list does not indicate that bent will grow well below 5 or perennial rye will grow well above 8 only that the turf grass is tolerant of that soil pH, and is more likely to grow well at that pH than a turf grass that is not tolerant. 
When soil pH requires adjustment, the best opportunity to adjust pH is during construction or renovation. Prior to turf grass planting is one of the only opportunities you will have to apply large quantities of acidifying, or neutralizing products to the soil, without damaging the turf grass. So, take advantage of this opportunity. You may never have it again. Once turf grass is established, how do we go about increasing it? In short, following your soil test liming recommendation is a valid approach to increasing soil pH. The liming recommendation from your soil test will provide a reasonably accurate estimation regarding how much lime to apply. Most soil test labs base this recommendation off the buffer pH, not the soil pH. The buffer pH provides an estimation of both the active and exchangeable acidity, and provides a better estimation of the soil's ability to resist pH change, than simply using soil pH. In general, the most common form of lime is calcium carbonate due to it being the least expensive source. However, many other liming sources can be used to increase soil pH. So, how exactly does calcium carbonate increase pH? For simplicity, we are emitting reactions with aluminum, understand the reaction is more complex than this. When calcium carbonate dissolves into the soil solution, it will react with water to form calcium, bicarbonate, and hydroxide. The bicarbonate and hydroxide will then react with hydrogen in the soil solution, which neutralizes the hydrogen and increases pH. This continues, so long as there is calcium carbonate and hydrogen in the soil solution the calcium is free to replace any other cation on the soil exchange sites. When calcium exchanges with hydrogen, this will allow the hydrogen to enter the same reaction and increase the pH further. In order for calcium carbonate to reduce pH, it would need to liberate hydrogen, not neutralize it. This is why it is not chemically possible for calcium carbonate to lower pH. Back to Joel's claim. Because what we want to accomplish is using that lime to knock off that excessive magnesium, which will actually start to allow hydrogen to come onto that soil colloid and bring the pH down. Joel asserts that when the exchange sites have too much magnesium, the calcium will exchange the magnesium. That is the sliver of truth. Let's take a look. If we assume a large percentage of exchange sites are occupied by magnesium, when we apply lime, indeed calcium will exchange with the magnesium. But, neutralization of hydrogen in the soil solution is still occurring, and all Joel did was exchange one divalent cation for another. Of course, Joel may argue that because calcium is larger than magnesium, then there is more room for a smaller ion like hydrogen to get in because the soil is now more open. This is simply piffle, resulting from Joel's impressively poor understanding of soils. To make matters worse, even if hydrogen in the soil solution moved onto the exchange site, this would only serve to increase the soil pH further because the hydrogen would be moving from active acidity to exchangeable acidity. So, we're right, and you're wrong. Now let's talk about when your soil pH is already high, and it has been determined that lowering pH would be beneficial. Notice nowhere on this list will you find calcium carbonate. The recommendation is using high calcium lime, even though the pH is high, and bring the pH down. Thanks Joel. But you will find sulfate, which is where uneducated salesmen get confused and mislead the public. High pH, low calcium, or high magnesium, and high pH, we're going to go in there with probably gypsum to adjust that because of the sulfur. The sulfur in gypsum is in the form of sulfate, which does not influence pH except in one specific case. Elemental sulfur does. When sulfur enters the soil, thiobacillus bacteria use oxygen and water to convert the sulfur to sulfuric acid, which liberates hydrogen and sulfate. This liberation of hydrogen decreases pH. When gypsum enters the soil, it dissociates into calcium and sulfate. This process does not neutralize, liberate, or add hydrogen to the system, and therefore gypsum does not influence pH, except in sodic soils, which we will discuss in a moment. You may notice on this list, aluminum, ammonium, and ferrous sulfate. In these cases, it is the cation that reduces pH, not the sulfate. When aluminum or iron sulfate enter the soil, they react with water to form either aluminum or iron hydroxide. This process liberates hydrogen and decreases pH. When ammonium sulfate enters the soil, it will dissociate into ammonium and sulfate. Nitrosomonas bacteria may then convert the ammonium to nitrite, which liberates the hydrogen and decreases pH. Whether it is from aluminum, iron, or ammonium sulfate, the sulfate does not neutralize, liberate, or add hydrogen to the system, and therefore the sulfate has no effect on soil pH. How much of these materials should you apply? This will vary depending on the existing pH, desired reduction, and soil type. In general, aluminum and iron sulfate should be used only by professional turf managers, and even then, only prior to turf grass establishment due to the risk of turf grass death. Elemental sulfur can also be applied prior to turf grass establishment at high rates as shown here. However, after turf grass establishment, sulfur should be applied at no more than 1 pound per thousand square feet on greens, and no more than 5 pounds on all other turf grass, 
with no more than 10 pounds applied annually to greens or elsewhere. If you choose to use ammonium sulfate, we recommend using ammonium sulfate as your nitrogen source and simply apply it at rates based upon your nitrogen needs. In this fashion, pH reduction will require more time, but can be more simple to implement. In some soils, the pH is high due to excessive sodium and are referred to as sodic soils. Sodic soils are prone to pH that exceeds 8.3, which is the pH limit of calcium carbonate. How does sodium increase soil pH beyond the 8.3 limit of calcium carbonate? The answer is rather banal. Sodium carbonate is more soluble than calcium carbonate. At 8.3, calcium carbonate precipitates out of the soil solution, meaning it is no longer soluble and therefore no longer able to react. However, sodium carbonate does not precipitate out of solution and remains soluble. In fact, sodium carbonate is many thousand times more soluble than calcium carbonate. Therefore, the carbonate in sodium carbonate is able to react with hydrogen ions, further increasing the soil pH well above 8.3. Now, we understand that if your soil pH is greater than 8.3, it could be due to sodium. In these cases, it is normally most efficient to address the sodium first. Applying the acidifying products mentioned earlier, can still effectively reduce soil pH, but they may be addressing the symptom more than the cause. This is one of the only legitimate cases where gypsum is needed. Gypsum is calcium sulfate, and when calcium sulfate enters a sodic soil, it will dissociate into calcium and sulfate. The calcium can replace sodium on the soil exchange sites, and the sulfate will bind the sodium forming sodium sulfate. Simultaneously, sodium in the soil solution in the form of sodium carbonate, or sodium bicarbonate, will be converted to calcium carbonate and sodium sulfate. The resulting sodium sulfate must be leached out of the root zone for this process to be beneficial. After the sodium in the soil is leached, the carbonate previously associated with sodium will be less soluble and therefore less likely to bind with hydrogen, resulting in a pH reduction. Once the sodium concentration declines and the soil pH reduces to 8.5, you can then proceed with acidifying the soil as we previously explained. Gypsum will reduce pH to 8.5, but will not reduce it further. In summary, don't worry about soil pH unless the pH varies significantly below 6 or above 7. Low soil pH can be increased using lime, high soil pH can be reduced using a variety of acidifying products, and sodic soils require sodium to be addressed first. But, in no situation will calcium carbonate ever lower pH. The quantity and magnitude of misinformation in the turfgrass industry is astonishing. As soon as you refute one claim, another one pops up. If you think you are being misled, don't be afraid to reach out to an actual turfgrass scientist who is willing to help you. That is all we have today. We thank you so much for watching and we hope everyone has a great week. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you want to be notified of new content and we will see you next time for more Turf Truth Fun. See you then.